We both worked in advertising, you see, Mrs Troy. Quite successfully. In fact, we helped to get the present government elected. Well, there won't be any reason to mention that to the jury. <laughs> this round-the-world trip was a sort of once-in-a-lifetime thing. How far did you get, exactly? Oh, over halfway. We made a couple of stops for refits and so on, and we stopped once or twice to take on extra crew. We were on the return leg when we had the collision. With what? A whale. A whale? <laughs> yes. I don't know what happened. You know, it almost seemed to attack the boat in a way. Uh, maybe it mistook you for Norwegian, Mr Clements. Should have had your Greenpeace T-shirt on. <laughs> Not just at the moment, if you don't mind, Arthur. Yes, sorry. Anyway, the boat went down in minutes. It was terrifying. We only just had time to get the life rafts off and that was it. We lashed them together so that we wouldn't get separated. After we'd been at sea for about a month, I woke up one morning and Brian had gone. That's all I know. I never saw him again. How did you keep going, Mr Clements, once you'd run out of supplies? Rainwater when it fell. Fish. Fish? Hmm. When I could catch them. How did you cook them? I didn't. You were on the return leg of your journey, Mr Clements. Uh, yes, that's it. We'd taken someone on in Australia as crew for part of the journey, and he'd agreed to work the passage with us in return for a lift to Panama. We stopped there, let him off. We ended up staying for about ten days to do some minor repairs. And you then resumed your journey? Yes, that's right. We were about 14 days out of Panama when the boat got rammed. So what then, Mr Clements? Oh, well, we took to the emergency life rafts and uh, we lashed them together and basically just drifted. And how did you come to be in possession of Mr Dart's wedding ring? We talked about... about dying. Some days were so unbearable you wanted to die. Brian gave me his wedding ring and said that if I made it back and he didn't, I was to give it to his wife. Give it to his wife with his love. Difficult times, Mr. Clinton. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, how did you catch fish without a hook? Uh, with the ring. I used it as a lure on the end of some cotton. Uh, when I got thirsty, I sucked on the ring to try and make the saliva come. I choked on it. It's hard to explain here to someone who doesn't know what uh, thirst and hunger and despair really are. Thank you, Mr. Clement. Mr. Triggs, you're shot if you've kept your powder dry. Oh, my lord, <laughs> now, Mr. Clements, had there been any friction between you and Mr. Dart on this long voyage around the world? Oh, my lord, it would be difficult to have a short voyage around the world. <laughs> well, Mr. Clements? No. No, not really. I mean, no more than you'd expect between two people cooped up together for that length of time. So there were some disagreements. Violent disagreements, perhaps. Civilised disagreements. And now tell me, how long were your survival rations on the raft designed to last? Three weeks or so. And how long were you adrift? Eight. Then let me put this scenario to you, Mr. Clements. You and Mr. Dart have been adrift for some weeks, cast out in the watery wilderness, plagued with boils, with no hope of the promised land in sight. You had run out of food, and it was obvious that unless you were picked up soon, you would both die. Or maybe not. Maybe one of you could survive. I put it to you, Mr. Clements, that driven by a terrible thirst and hunger and a fear for your own death, you crossed that thin line between civilization and chaos and you descended like the Sodomites! No, no, Mr. <laughs> that is, uh, like the Philistines, my lord, into murder and into cannibalism. Was it not as I described, Mr. Clements? No, it was not. I didn't eat him. It seems the only crime I've committed is to survive. I'm very pleased. Well, yes, of course I am. Very happy. I want to thank my council as well.